Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and the next video in my weapon review series is going to be Barrett. And man, Barrett, Barrett, Barrett. Uh, he's one of those characters that did not get much love. And in fact, like one of the least amounts uh, for a really long time. And then recently, maybe in the last three months or so, four months, He's been getting some stuff that's been super useful and actually finding play in some high difficulty content. I'm thinking some guild battles, some crash battles. And so he's come onto the radar. Very uh, interesting to me that he wasn't featured more often throughout the game, uh, especially like in the first six months, because I've always thought that Barrett was one of the very, very main main characters, right? Um, in fact, He's like one of the first characters you get to play in Final Fantasy VII. You're using Cloud, Tifa, and Barret. Um, so the, the fact that he got overlooked for a while uh, just kind of really throws me off. But uh, I really like him. In fact, he was one of the first three characters that I took to max level when I started this game. I had intended my party to be Cloud, Aerith, and Barret. But then very soon after, realized that he uh, just wasn't... I uh, wasn't getting enough stuff, wasn't going to be as useful, so I kind of stopped for a while, but now I'm, I'm very happy to see that he's kind of had a resurgence. The first weapon I'm going to say uh, for him that's noteworthy is Hellhouse Cannon. It's a free weapon, and along with the, the Hellhouse Collar that Red got, uh, it was very useful for both the HP and physical defense. Uh, really shored up a lot of the uh, survivability stuff that we were needing at that time, and so this weapon uh, saw kind of a lot of play as a sub weapon for me. Lefko Kipseli is another free weapon that I found very useful. This came out around the same time as Torn Wing for Sephiroth and has very same R abilities, boost attack, boost physical defense. Uh, I was using this on a lot of stuff as a sub weapon um, for months and months and months, at least probably the first four or five months of the game once I got it. Okay, coming down to non-free weapons, Enemy Launcher, one of the best weapons I think he has, um, not as an active weapon, but as a sub weapon. Why? These right here. Um, boost attack is obviously kind of low, but there are times when you've already got physical attack maxed out, you're trying to hit the physical ability potency, or you just need physical ability potency on you know an elemental build. And this is really big because 52 points is just enough to have 26 as a sub weapon. So you put this on somebody as a sub weapon and they're already at level four physical ability potency, which is 45% more damage when your command stance is maxed. That is a lot, okay? And to kind of give a, a quick comparison, I uh, talk about this in another video. You know, if you're trying to boost your elemental potency, let's just say for lightning, and you've already got it up, you know, to at least like, you know, one of the higher tiers, but there's still two or three more tiers left. And a lot of those, you're you're getting 15% at most and then 10% towards the highest end. And I can tell you, even at 15%, okay, you're getting double damage for a weakness, right? So the, the enemy is weak to lightning in, in our scenario. So you're getting an extra double on that. And then maybe an Arcanum, um, but just using the, the simple math of like 15% times two is 30%. Right, and then okay, add another thirty percent to that, and you maybe maybe get to forty percent. Forty-five percent is still more. So a lot of times, um, once you get to a pretty high tier, it's better to put something like this if you're doing like physical damage than it is to go for that next tier um, as far as elemental stuff goes. So a weapon like this, very very valuable as a sub weapon, and I use it quite often still. However. Um, just one last thing, you know, at five star, it's not nearly as, as good. So it is something that you really want to get to at least like OB6, if not OB10. And one of the reasons also that I've taken it all the way to level 120. Uh, Heavy Hauser, this is interesting because this was a good weapon when it first came out. Uh, in the beginning of the game, like I said, it, you, we didn't have crazy, crazy C abilities and, and crazy R abilities like we're getting now. 940% uh, physical non-elemental damage was very high. I think it was among the highest that you could get. Uh, and then the R abilities. This was one of the big weapons that did ability potency and attack as opposed to the standard like physical attack and HP or something. So 
This weapon, I think, was also a, quite a good sub weapon in the beginning. Um, the problem is I didn't get it to OB10 till like quite recently, like within the last three months. And so it doesn't really see a lot of use from me, um, but I feel like it is a weapon that is uh, noteworthy just because it's a little bit different. And I think in the beginning of the game, it was still pretty good. Um, some other things that are, that are, I guess, you know, um, what's the word for it? Uh, <laughs> noteworthy because of what he did in the beginning of the game. He had a lot of overlap with Tifa. He could be the uh, utility debuffer person. Things like Solid Bazooka here that give the uh, magic attack decrease or W Machine that gives the physical defense decrease. He had a lot of overlapping stuff and often in videos when I use Tifa, I would usually say, hey, if you don't have Tifa, Barret has a very similar weapon. So maybe you've got something for him. Um, let's see. Agitation and, and Micro Laser, uh, or sorry, <laughs> Assault Gun and Micro Laser for the Stalwart Faith and Agitation. Uh, both noteworthy very briefly just because of their use in the high level content. Um, if you need him for the buffs that you're getting, those two are usually combined in some way or used at least one or the other. Now we get to some of the very, very best weapons for Barrett. Electro Cannon is top tier for him. It is the Kuja Spirit Blade, um, but not limited and I don't know, in, in a lot of ways, I just think maybe a little bit better. Um, although, it, you know, take your pick. So physical attack decrease, potency mid, all enemies stacks to high, 30 second duration, great duration. Um, and then if HP is 50% or more, magic attack decrease, potency mid, all enemies. Now that one doesn't stack to high, but still one cast, basically debuffing both physical and magical attack. It's obviously just priceless when you need that. And, you know, for people that miss Kuja Spirit Blade, kind of like what I said, uh, or what I will say <laughs> with Kamura Wand, uh, you know, sometimes you miss out on something that was limited and you have to make do and you wish you had it, but there's always going to be another weapon that eventually comes that can do the same thing or do something better. You just have to wait. Uh, that's what this weapon represented uh, for me and a lot of people who didn't get Kuja's Spirit Blade because it was the last weapon to be featured in the Final Fantasy IX crossover. Um, so when this came out, I was very excited to see it. The R abilities are also very noteworthy. Boost magic ability potency, max 52, another very high uh, ability potency there. And magic attack, which stacks really, really nicely with this and makes it an amazing, fantastic, phenomenal sub weapon. Uh, it's got a, a sigil break, like everything you would want, it has. Last, we're going to talk about Shark Slayer. And <laughs> I really did want one copy of this, couldn't get it. Um, but what it does is similar in fashion to some of Red's weapons. It gives two breaches, a fire breach and a water breach. Both go to potency high at OB6. And the reason I just wanted one copy is even at five star, you're getting mid potency. So a lot of value in getting a weapon like this, even just one copy. Um, it also has one of the highest buff debuff extension R abilities in the game. 52 points at OB10 is huge. If you had this in the main hand, you're three points under the max, 180% right off the bat. And even if it's not um, your main weapon as a sub weapon, throw just this on and you got 120% buff debuff extension. That is really, really big. Uh, the boost HP uh, is just fine. I mean, it's it's great. I think for a sub weapon, this is a pair that you would really be happy with. It also has a sigil boost. And I, you know, funny too, because even Barrett has considerably more sigil boosts than a lot uh, of, of players that are more DPS, main DPS type roles. Um, looking at you, Yuffie. Um, but that is what it is. And so that is my review of Barrett. I don't think I missed anything uh, as far as weapons that are not, you know, in my um, collection. But if I did, please tell me. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And uh, other than that, thanks for watching.